What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the Go Follow Up Podcast with me, your host, Jonathan Moore. On today's episode, I have Megan Myers from the Human Village Brewing Company. Megan shares her story on how she handcrafted her passion for learning about different brew styles, combining that with her love of sharing the human experience, which ultimately led to the conception of the Human Village Brewing Company. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Stick around. This is the Go Follow Up Podcast. So what's going on, everybody? And thank you for joining us at the Go Follow Up Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Moore. I am here today with Megan Myers of the Human Village Brewery. Hello, <laughs> Megan. How are you? Hi, Jonathan. How are you? Oh, I'm doing just well. How about yourself? Great. Great. It's a good day today. It is a good day, isn't it? It's nice. Not too hot, not too cold. Just perfect. Just perfect. All right. So for you guys out there who do not know who Megan is, she is the owner of the Human Village Brewery in Pittman, New Jersey. Um, so I'm going to just fall back and I'm going to let Megan explain it. So Megan, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, what you have going on right now? Absolutely. Well, I'm actually one of the co-owners. I own the Human Village Brewing Company with my husband, Richard Myers. Mm -hmm. um, the brewery's been open since November, so we're still a very young brewery, very uh, startup. Oh, this November? Yeah, just this November. Right. Wow. Uh, we are a one-barrel all-electric brew house, so it's about as traditional as you can get in our brewing methods. Mm -hmm. um, really producing one handcrafted batch at a time. Uh, to keep as many different styles and varieties on tap as we enjoy. Um, I, we really enjoy introducing maybe some styles that haven't been um, with tremendous market entry in the United States, bringing mm -hmm. some things over from uh, continental Europe, hmm. um, as well as, you know, experimenting and finding, uh, you know, what are those flavors that maybe haven't uh, been explored yet and um, taking kind of a culinary bent to what we do. So, you know, it's, it's been running well, and um, we're looking forward to, to seeing what the next year holds, certainly. Okay. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and, and how you ended up becoming, are you a brewmaster? Is that what they call oh, that? No, I am not the brewmaster. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Absolutely Well, how did you get into the, into the brewery game? <laughs> All right. Well, we um, originally... We were home brewers, and mm -hmm. um, we really enjoyed kind of exploring what could be done with the craft of beer making by researching uh, very traditional methods, styles, and why the beers were brewed the way they were based on the history of the beer. And so, you know, we thought if we took that to produce a product that was very true to those intentions, mm -hmm. um, it became a passion project for us. And we found that we were giving away a lot more beer than we could ever keep uh, to our friends and getting so good feedback on it. So it started out as a hobby? It really was. It wasn't just a hobby. It was, you know, kind of a lot of intensive nerdy research, too. It was something okay. we were really interested in. Uh -huh. And it was. Uh, it kind of came out of the how and why. Okay. And I, re I feel like we started homebrewing at the kind of when the IPA craze was hitting. Yes. Everybody okay. wanted to challenge you. What was the most amount of hops you could chalk into a bottle and how much could the human palate really take? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. um, yes. But, you know, I, I, we kind of felt that maybe some of the beer had lost a sense of balance. Yeah, for and sure. For sure. We wanted to kind of return the beer we were crafting to that, a little something a little bit more nuanced. Okay. And... Um, Actually, I'll never forget the day I opened. It was a New Belgium fat tire. Yes. Which was I know fat such tire. a complete departure, though, from the IPA scene, from the pale ales, from yeah. the wheat beers. And it was just a solid, balanced amber ale. And it was so good. I love, I love fat tire. Yeah. yeah and so I completely favorites. appreciated that sense of just crafting something for the craft of it. Okay. And then when you looked into the company, um, and we looked into it, it's a it was a female run brewery. Mm -hmm. um, it is employee owned, and they were founded on so many ethical values 
that we appreciated. We thought, you know, they're really pioneers in a direction we'd like to head in of making sure that not only is your company um, focused on producing a good product, but it's good to their people. Okay. Wow. That's, that's pretty intense. That's pretty intense. You were you were you, you were beer or wine? I'm a, I'm assuming both. beer. You like you like both. Both. Actually. Did you ever make any homemade wine? Uh, I've not made homemade wine, but I split time growing up between um, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and Napa Valley. Okay. And so I actually right. grew up a little steeped in wine. <laughs> okay. All right. So you have an appreciation. Yeah. You're not just like one or the other. Right. Well, that's that's a uh, that's pretty cool. What? So. You said that the brewery just opened up in 2016. Right. What were you doing right before you opened the brewery? Uh, right before I opened the brewery, I had put my career on hiatus to uh, have my second son get off to school. Okay. And it was kind of that, that fork in the road moment of do I go back to what I had studied, what my career was, what my objective was, mm -hmm. or do, you know, my husband and I, do we take this kind of new direction? He works a full-time job. He's in nuclear, uh, nuclear science. Okay. And you know, if, if we're going to launch the brew house, it's going to need to be my full-time job, right. uh, to, you know, make sure that the day-to-day -day is taken care of. So what do I do? And we decided just to go for it. <laughs> wow. Was that a scary decision? Oh, absolutely. Or was terrifying. it like super exciting? It, was it, or was it like a mix of both? It was a mix of both. It was super exciting and very determined and very confident. And then around three thirty in the morning, it was very, very scary for like a panic 20 minutes before I was right. like, no, no, you got this. Go back to bed. <laughs> right, right, right. That's, that's, uh, that's really cool. So you, you took that leap of faith and yeah. it's, and it's been good ever since. It's been really good. Uh, the, the reception that we've gotten has been tremendous and um we can't thank you know the number of people who've really supported us and given us strong advice all along the way enough because you know it's never really about what you do it's about the people you listen to right now Pittman is a uh it where it, it was a still dry is. or still is a yeah. dry town technically right? right so what brought you to this area we loved the town okay we absolutely love the town. Mm -hmm. um, it it has this great community vibe, small, independently owned stores. You're not going to see a chain store along the main street of Pittman. Right. It has this wonderful restored theater, um, some great restaurants, some great activities. And we thought, you know, if it had a brewery, we would integrate really well into the vibe of the town. Mm -hmm. um, and we thought if we approached the uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the, the worst they could say is no. Right. So I prepared a pitch package and a presentation okay. and came in with all of my analytics about, you know, what is running a brewery? Who are our market? What does this area have to offer? And fully expecting that I would have this uphill battle. Right. And we, I, we brought all these growlers of beer and set out a whole tasting for, you know, all these interested parties in the community. It's a good idea. Everybody try, loves a good beer. Yeah, to try to sell them on the idea. And, and this was all your own personal beer that you brewed. Actually, at this point, we were involved with another couple, um, Phil and Emily Barnes. Okay. And since then, we've kind of taken the direction um, they, they didn't see that getting into the company at the point that they were at in their life was quite what they uh, they were going for. But um, Phil had brewed some of the beer, and it was Emily and I who sat to pitch the idea of the company. Okay. Um, so it is a big leap, and I can completely understand why, you know, they felt that that would not be for them at the moment. It's really not for everybody. Right. But... Um, and we walked in, and there was no pitch necessary. They were like, we were, we were trying to court a brewery. <laughs> wow. We were floored. Wow. Absolutely floored. Talk about timing. Yeah. Wow. Timing is everything, huh? <laughs> they were, you, you thought that you were going to have this uphill battle. Right. And we meanwhile, they were like, to open yeah, the door they were like they were waiting for like, you with open arms. Yeah. Like, oh, we've been waiting for you to get here. <laughs> so how's the town response been being that? You know, they're traditionally a dry town, and now they have a place that they can, you know, go out and have a drink and enjoy themselves. And um, Lisa Morgie, who is the president of the Chamber of Commerce, actually just went to speak in Haddonfield at a, um, at a, I'm sorry, a council meeting there 
uh, because Haddonfield's also a dry town, and they're trying to Portaburg. Yeah, I used to live in Collingswood, okay. so I know. Yeah, yeah. The Devil's Creek had an uphill battle trying to get to Collingswood. Yeah, um, but Lisa Morgan came from Pittman to say that the breweries have changed Pittman so much for the better in ways that you would expect as an economic engine, but also right. in ways that you wouldn't as changing the social life of Pittman right. and bringing people together and having that place where you can go and be friends and get out right. of the house and right. and bringing the community back out into the sidewalks in a way that they never expected. Right. So, you know, t I could give my impression, mm -hmm. but her testifying in front of this council meeting in Haddonfield meant the world. It's kind of been um, a flooring experience seeing how much has has kind of changed. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's really awesome. So right now, currently, where you're at in your business, what is the one thing that you're you're really excited about? The one thing that I'm really excited about is um, recently we have gotten some more clarity from the New Jersey Alcoholic Beverage Control, the NJABC, okay. about um, what events and what things we can do in our tap room. Okay. And part of that clarity was to say, it was never a no, there was never a no music, but it wasn't a yes. Okay. So we kind of skirted this gray area, but because we're in the location of the Bus Stop Music Cafe, mm -hmm. and the music is a tradition that's important to this community, we were going to carry it forward. All right. um, now that we have that yes, really engaging the community arts and... Um, Making sure that we can keep that music tradition going and glowing is something I'm very excited yeah. for. We have a major festival, uh, a Northeast Brewery Tour okay. coming uh, called the Band-Aid Music Festival. Um, it's going up and down breweries across the East Coast, bringing in some fan phenomenal acts. Mm -hmm. um, before us, they're starting in uh, Triumph Brewing Company. Um, they're going to Yards, they're going to the World mm -hmm. Cafe, they're going to the Karen Dinha Music Festival, and they're coming to Pittman. Wow. So that's something coming wow. up that we're really excited for. Um, and also, you know, as we look into expansion, mm -hmm. um, making sure that we keep this tap room, the community place that it, it really is and has become, but um, going into an off-site facility where we can have a larger capacity um, to distribute and, you know, try to bring out into our surrounding area what we're doing onto TAPS. Oh, so. wow. So when you say that, when you're talking about, you know, expanding, um, are you mean, you know, do you mean like creating like your own label, like, um, you know, getting into stores or getting into the other TAPS and other bars or? Yeah, I, I think what we're looking at right now primarily is, is, distributing directly to other bars and restaurants okay. as we would expand. And I think that would be um, an off-site facility, probably located right here in Pittman. We're looking for some real estate um, that is not open to the public. So our tap room would be entirely, you know, how we would interact. Okay. Um, but yes, yeah, so... And we've had a, a number of places approach us looking for beer, but unfortunately, right now we're just keeping up with the tap room. So right, yeah, it'd be nice to not for just sure. be keeping up. Because <laughs> you see that in you know other areas you go to, you know, um, what's a what's a bar that I like that's over in um, I, I believe it's Westmont. Um, Poorhouse. Poorhouse. Oh, uh, Poorhouse and they'll is have, awesome. Yeah, and they'll yeah. have you know you know from the local breweries uh some some things on tap so that's what you're looking to do it is that would be awesome it's tremendous because so many of the local bars and restaurants have realized that people want local and, yeah they do and one of the major um pieces of the puzzle that we brought to Pittman to say maybe mm. a brewery would be beneficial is there's a research done by the brewers association that says in over a third of craft beer drinkers buying choice when they pick yeah. a tap one third of the decision is driven by how local the beer is. Wow. And that's a tremendous. You know what? That's very interesting because yeah. I, I do that as well, too. Yeah, I don't I know do why. Well. Yeah. It's like, you too. know, when I buy something or my wife buys something, you know, it's like you're always like kind of saying where it's from, you know, oh, it's, it's right here. Or, you know, it's like we were just talking before we you know started recording uh, about like River Horse, you know, right. and how, you know, local it is and. I don't know. I guess it's a it's a strange sense of pride that you get, kind of. I, I think there's a 
big cultural movement, which is kind of awesome to see towards authenticity. Yes. As opposed to brand. Yes. As opposed to marketing. Right. And you see the decline of these major retail centers like our shopping malls, etc. Mm-hmm. And you're seeing more and more people want something that's handcrafted or they want something that has that kind of provenance right, behind yeah. it. And I think as people are buying maybe less possessions, because that's what they found with the millennials, we're collecting less stuff, mm-hmm. but we're making the stuff that we have higher quality. Yes. And it's going to last us. And I, I think maybe that that kind of zeitgeist is permeating yeah. through the I want local, I want something real, I want something that I have a connection to. Right. And uh, I want a meaningful experience as opposed to a thing. You know what? It's interesting because that's almost like it's like a minimalistic transition, right? Like you, you have less, but it's higher quality. And the funny thing is, is even when I go and, you know, I'm in a liquor store and I'm about to purchase something, you know, even though it might have a higher price tag, it's it's just a better quality. You know, right. I'm going to take, you know... Um, you know, something by River Horse or something over, you know, just like a Budweiser or something like that, like a generic, you know, like not generic, right. but like a like those bigger brands, you know, it's like those. Well, but because as a craft beer drinker, mm-hmm. you're not looking to just slam a bunch of beers back. Right. Exactly. You want to There's savor what's in your glass. And right. so you're willing to pay for the experience of actually sitting and enjoying it. Right. Right. That's true. It's a very considered decision. Watch people in front of, um, in the liquor stores and in front of the refrigerators, mm-hmm. how carefully they'll pick over all the craft beer brands. Oh, yeah. And if I want to go in and I want to grab like a case of Amstel, mm-hmm. I'm going in, I'm going right for it. I'm picking it up and right. I'm walking out. Right. But people linger in front of the craft beer oh they do i do myself personally i'll spend like all time you know you're like looking and you're reading you're like oh this is new you know you're and then you have your favorites you know but you're always on the look for for something new something to be excited about absolutely absolutely so what's one of the biggest challenges that you face right now you got a lot of steam going you got a lot of momentum but what do you see as one of your you know your biggest challenges Our absolute biggest challenge is finding that balancing point between growing too quickly Mm -hmm. and not being able to catch up. Okay. And I know it's a bad, I know, you know, it sounds like I should be pulling out all the violins. Oh, we can't keep up. Right. It's like where somebody might say to you, well, that's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have and it's a bad problem to have. Right. So, um, the... Founder of Lagunitas Brewing Company wrote a book, and I think it's called, so you want to open a brewery, or it's, it's something to that effect. Okay. Where his biggest caveat was do not grow too fast. Okay. And it's true, because as you open, you're going to have that uptick, mm-hmm. and you, you know, you'll know you be the new thing, but then somebody else will open, and they'll be the new thing. And finding um, the trends mm-hmm. in our business to find kind of where that middle point is to be able to make very studied and cogent decisions about how we expand and how we move forward Mm -hmm. and being new. That's our biggest challenge right now is finding that path with not a whole lot of information Mm -hmm. and making sure we're still meeting demand. Okay. Do you, so you're just, you're trying to find that like happy medium, right? Not, not too fast, but not too slow. Right. Do you feel like you're getting pulled in either direction? Like, you know, um, like by maybe like you were saying how a couple of local places had approached you. Do you feel like that demand is like? You do. I I, I have to say you do feel I do feel the pressure sometimes to to try to churn out more or expand really quickly and mm-hmm. meet demand and have market entry in all directions and try to do as much as we can and and it's just it's not it's not salient. It's not. A, you know, a, mm-hmm. a good way to go about it without information and all gut and all heart and all passion. And that sounds like it's a really romantic right. version that you could just go for it. But, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, there was a craft beer bubble in the 1980s. A lot of craft breweries opened, expanded really quickly. The market kind of collapsed down in on itself a little bit. And so many of these breweries wound up shutting down. And so I just want to make sure that we're doing something that's good for now and good for the future. And we can be uh, a tentpole in the community because it's best for the whole Main Street to not, you know, have businesses kind of operating willy-nilly and just keeping a steady course. Yes. 
So there's another brewery right next door to you. Yeah, Kelly Green. Kelly Green. Did you guys open at the same time or were they before or after you? They opened before us. This was a case of both of us coming at the same point around opposite corners. Okay. <laughs> and startling each other when we met. Okay. Um, yeah. At the same time, we were looking to come in. At, uh, they were as well. Mm -hmm. And we... Um, Initially, we're going to take a building up the street across from the theater that has been involved in a long renovation process. So they wound up signing a lease and starting the process of opening while we were still negotiating a lease. Okay. And um, we actually did not have any intention of opening right next door to them. That was uh, kind of a some esprit. Right. Um, the owner of the bus stop music cafe approached us to say that he was going to retire and offered us to take over that location. Um, and he just was kind of putting out feelers. Who are we? What are we about? And are we, you know, people who would want to work with? And uh, we just clicked. Okay. And so it, it happened just by circumstance. Okay. But I think it's a really good thing because, um, you know, any efforts Kelly Green puts forward to promote their brand. I've mm. never been to a place where if there's two breweries, I'm not going to both breweries. Right. Yeah. I want you to try all of the beer. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You know. That and we have 10 taps. I'll right. say nine because we keep a craft soda on one of the taps. Okay. And he has, I think it's 10, 12 taps. Mm -hmm. um, so between us, we have as many taps as maybe a larger bar or tap room. Okay. And so we can be that draw yeah, with the two of us. For sure. Where do you draw your inspiration <laughs> from to come up with your recipes you know silly enough i was just thinking about this yesterday mm -hmm. and i was listening to music okay and i got and there there was some inspiration that came from music i was actually listening to the white stripes okay and i was thinking All about right. my husband and myself you know running the brewery and like jack and meg white yeah it was just the two of them and it was basically as bare bones and i thought well if we did this really stripped down recipe where it's called a smash a single malt single hop mm-hmm um, and to try something that showcases one of the newer hops that's coming out of New Zealand. Okay. Um, anything can kind of inspire, mm -hmm. and um, but a lot of it is we we really want to teach people kind of the history of where the beer came from. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so an inspiration was we were looking for recipes that hadn't really been brewed, and we found one that hasn't really been brewed except by one brewery. In the United States, Rot Brewing Company is called a Harlem Bock beer. Okay. And it hasn't been brewed in about 500 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we're going to be bringing that one back. Okay. Um, and we can speak to it. Um, there's another one, the Rocken beer, mm -hmm. has not really come back into the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, that one, I can't wait to brew in my inspirations because it's got such a good story behind it. Okay. Uh, it's brewed with rye. <clears throat> okay. So it's a German beer with a rye malt. Mm. And there was a famine in Germany, and but the government had to order that they stop brewing with the rye because it was needed to bake the bread. Okay. I love that story because people right. are starving, and they're like, we're still going to make the beer, though. Right, right. right. We're still going get... <laughs> to make the beer. <laughs> and so they instituted what's called the Reinheitsgebot. I mm -hmm. hope I'm pronouncing that right. I've only read it. Okay. But <laughs> um, where the Germans said you may brew with the following ingredients or we do not consider it to be beer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, and rye is not one. It has to be barley malt. Mm -hmm. It has to be your hops. It has, and so, yeah. So this beer was literally outlawed. Wow. That and is so interesting. The Roken beer is hard yeah. to find now. It say it hasn't really come back. Oh, that's so cool. And yeah. you're going to be bringing it back. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm is excited cool. about I'm, that. Oh, one. I'm definitely going to have to have to come and, and, and try that out. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're calling it the Seth Roken beer. <laughs> that's a good name. How do you come up with your names? Um, alcohol. Yeah. Being overtired. Okay. Writing down whatever keeps to mind and then saying a hundred times no, that doesn't work. Okay. I initially, we have an agave nectar beer, and right now it's just called agave nectar. Okay. But um, <clears throat> I'd wanted to call it Desperado or Antonio Beerderas. Oh, that's husband, a good one. Yeah. No, it's not good. My no. husband was like, no, it's never going up as uh, a dude, name. Dude, I love Antonio Beerderas. <laughs> Antonio Beerderas. <laughs> Beerderas. You know what? That would be cool, though. Yeah, but he's, he's totally like he's not feeling like, it. Not no, I'm not feeling that one. Okay. <laughs> so our names are uh, yeah. How big of a dork I'm allowed to be? Okay. Tonight we're putting a new one on tap. What do you got? It's a raspberry sour. It's a wheat beer. Ooh. It's a sour wheat beer with actual black raspberry, all organic black raspberries in it. Wow. And that one's called my pucker face. 
Wow. I like that. My wife would probably love that. She's like getting into the beers now. She she Not loves too it. Sweet. Yeah. I like that about it. She's becoming a big fan. She <laughs> used to be like strictly wine, but now she's like, oh, wait, she's bringing more, bringing home more stuff than I am now. Like she's, I don't know where she's finding this stuff at, but Women I'm loving it. drink the lion's share of craft beer. They do. Isn't that crazy? It's kind of, it's, it's interesting. Really yeah. yeah, it's interesting. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Cause like I said, like she'll come home with how oh, I, I bought this or I got this. You want to try this? And it's like, wow, man, where are you finding all this stuff? But you know, it used to be me, but now it's her. So that's awesome. It's, it's even better for me. I'm going to go drink with your wife. Wow. There you go. <laughs> she would probably love it. She would love it. Um, so have you, you, this is a little like side note, but um, you were talking about, you know, the stories of these beers from these different countries. Have you ever traveled to these countries and like, I, like visited like the motherland of, oh of, of the beers or their stories? So this is where my story gets a little crazy. Um, okay. I have been to the UK. I've been to Ireland. I've been to Scotland. Mm -hmm. I have gone through St. James Gate and I've gone and had a Guinness in the Guinness Brewery. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, that was a great experience. That's pretty cool. Guinness yeah. from Guinness tastes amazing. Wow. I have not gotten to continental Europe. Really? But funnily enough, mm -hmm. my previous career, my education, everything was in the Middle East. So I have spent that? more time mm -hmm. in dry countries mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> than I have in, in Europe, homeland of beer. That's crazy. Yeah. So you figure you just might as well have your own brewery. To make up all the time for the dry country. Yeah, I, I don't know. The desert's hot and dry, so when you come home, maybe you need a drink. Yeah. I, don't know. I hear you on that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. So, is there a book that you've read that just kind of changed your perspective um, about pursuing your dream? I mean, you know, that's kind of a hard one because... Was it always your dream to, to be an entrepreneur, to be a business owner, or is it just a passion and you've seen an opportunity? I think deep down, I always knew I wanted to own my own business. Okay. Or maybe that's not true. I, cause I kind of saw myself as either going and teaching, teaching or going into business, teaching like a school teacher. Yeah. Wow. Like a I'm a school teacher. professor. Yeah. yeah. And I was teaching high school. Um, yeah. I just always Teach wanted out. to share something I was really passionate about, and I think that was Absolutely. the heart of it. Um, I would have loved to, to taught history, political science. Okay. Um, and I think, you know, as being a business owner, that, that scratches that itch of getting to share something I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, if there was a book that I read mm -hmm. that uh, inspired... I... Goodness, that's a tough question. Yeah. Um, I'm going to come back to that. Okay. I'm going to give you an actual thought out answer. Okay. Let me circle back. All right. All right. Okay. Well, how about this? Is there a person that you met along your journey that really gave you, you know, that faith to, to just go for it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. My mother. And I know that's such that's such like a standing answer, you know. Yeah. I every football player is like, I want to thank my mom. You gotta but love no, mom. No, I do. So. I, I have to. I have to give it to my mother. She, um, single mom raising two kids, mm -hmm. and she was a school teacher, and she worked her way up to a, being a publishing executive, and she just, she just never stopped. She's one of those women that I, you don't know where the energy comes from. Right. And it is boundless. And she was my example for if you keep your nose to the grindstone, if you work as hard as you can, if you don't ever cry into your soup and you just keep going for it, you can, you can achieve incredible things. And, uh, she has, she's been my model for, you know, just patiently keeping at it. Wow. So. That's wonderful. You gotta love moms, right? Yeah, I do. You gotta yeah. love moms. And that, and she's always, uh, she's always been very frank with me. Okay. And that's what I appreciate. So if I ran an idea by my mom and she was not like, no. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> if she was like, you know, if she actually gave me the feedback of actually, I think you can make this work. I think this is a solid idea. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, she could get behind it. I, I could trust that. So when you come to her, you, you, you better have all your ducks in a row. Right. <laughs> right. You can't come like, oh, well, I got this kind of idea floating around. Yeah, she's not going to share it. She's not anything. doing that right there. Yeah. Nope. That's good, though. You need that in your life. You know, you need somebody that, you know, you can trust and who's just going to be direct with you because you never know. You know, a lot of people will tell you that your ideas are great, yeah. you know, but... Maybe because they just like you as a person. It's like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. That's awesome, you know? Um, this is an off-the-wall book. I'm mm-hmm. going to circle back to this. Okay. Sweet. It is a completely off-the-wall book to relate back to this. Okay. But is it Woodrow? Woodruff? It's called a Winter's Bone. Winter's Bone? A Winter's Bone. A Winter's Bone, okay. And it's the story of a young woman. It's a short it's short fiction. Okay. And it's a tremendous story of a young woman in Appalachia who her father is missing. She has um she has to find him. She's taking she her mother is disabled and she has her two younger siblings. Mm-hmm. And it's a story, it's a very dark story set in Appalachia about a, a young woman just kind of going out to find the, find the answer and find the truth through some really, really dark circumstance. The, the author speaks to a corner of America that is not talked about frequently. Mm-hmm. And there really are these communities that are so closed Mm-hmm. Um, this this was talking about the methamphetamine trade. His, her father had gotten involved in that. Okay. Um, but it, it opens up this view, and it cry, and he's from the area. Like he writes to life, and there were a lot of people from the communities he was writing about that were very upset with him because it is so photo real to their existence. Wow. Um, and. I think no matter no matter what I think is a challenge, no matter what I would like to say is holding me back, mm-hmm. I have no no idea the existence that other people live and the challenges that other people fight through to be a success or to carve out their their ability to breathe. Right. And the inspiration I, I wouldn't say it's the inspiration of, of the brewery, but I, I love reading these stories of people persevering in ways that I could never, ever imagine. I, and as we were opening and going through the licensing and working with the contractors and you get little setbacks and little trip ups, I was reading The Revenant. Okay. <laughs> which I don't know if you know the story of The Revenant of the man who uh, was left to die by his his comrades on the fur trade oh, no, and got no, mauled no. by a bear and oh. wound up crawling 200 miles to like, you know what? I didn't read the book, but I seen the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Yeah. The book was not, the book was totally the book is, different. The book is always better, but, but there's, you know, you just have to keep reminding yourself that any challenge you face mm-hmm. is just maybe a little trivial right? to something that people have actually overcome. Mm-hmm. Or they're they're working against. Yeah, it's it's interesting you said that um, because I'm reading a book right now. Uh, what's it called? The Glass Castle um, by Jeanette Walls. Okay. And she ends up in Appalachia, um, and she talks about her family. It's a memoir, and she's talking about all the things that she had to go through and overcome. And uh, it's it's a really good book. You know, kind of sad, you know, yeah. you know, father's an alcoholic or mom is kind of like, you know, doesn't, you know, believes in kids raising themselves right. and, you know, the, the level of poverty that they, they experience and, you know, all the things that she's she's going through, you know, and she, she ends up becoming a successful author. But I mean, it's like you said, right, it gives you like just a different sense of perspective when you're facing trials and tribulations right they, yeah you've been in many ways i i i have no complaints i have been so blessed in my life to have a good family Absolutely. have a good network have support and some people don't even have that they don't even right. have the support behind them right um but as far as the theme to the brewery i would say um joseph campbell absolutely a hero with a thousand faces okay uh which discusses 
the universal symbols mm -hmm. that are through all of human um, mythology. Wow. And it's it's a tremendous, it's a life changing book. And what's it called again? The Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell. Uh -huh. uh, he's, he's a uh, he was a professor. I believe he taught at Columbia. Okay. And it goes into deep into the role of archetype mm -hmm. in storytelling and mythology. Okay. And that every hero journey has these these universal themes, whether it's a Babylonian hero or a Native American hero or a Greek tragedy. Mm -hmm. You have um, the crossing of water. Mm -hmm. You have the trials of the hero. Hmm. You have these same meanings even that are held intrinsic into the symbols and the stories right and to connect to the human experience to say that even into the stories we tell and the myths that pervade our cultures mm -hmm. we have commonality the world over is is absolutely something that underpins the values of the human village oh wow that's deep <laughs> that's so cool that's so cool, man. And that, you know, if, whether it was the beer halls, the meat halls, um, sitting around a fire in uh, Wadi Rum with tea mm -hmm. and telling stories, every human culture has that, that essence and that fire to gather around. Mm -hmm. And that's what we wanted to bring into the human village, that, yes, we're making beer, right. but having a beer is about sitting with people and sharing and communicating and being together. And that's, you know, also why we wanted to place ourselves in a tight-knit community. Right, right. Because that is the experience you're looking for. We all have roles in the community. That's They're important. True. That's we're sitting true. in a bakery. That's true. We are sitting in a bakery. There's the brewer and the baker the bakery. and the, yeah. you know, the rest. The barber tour. shop, yeah, you know the barber, and uh, it's really cool, man. And when you know the people in your community, when you interact with them, when you're close with them, your life is enriched. Wow, wow. Well, you know what? I think we're just gonna leave it there. We're just gonna leave it off there. I want to say thank you so much for taking the time and, and 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 interviewing and sharing what you what you learned and your experience and. If anybody wants to get a hold of you, um, how could they find you? Absolutely. Um, our Twitter handle is at Human Brewing. Uh, okay. Same as on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, my email address is villager at humanvillagebrewingco.com. Uh, you can also find all of our contact information on our website, www.humanvillagebrewingco.com. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, definitely. Thank you so much, Jonathan. No. This has been so much fun. It's been fun, hasn't it? It's cool, man. I'm, I'm just really excited. I was so interested. At, I came down for that event. For um, it was a boys and girls club event. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I just love, I just love like you know craft beer. I just love. And then like the vibe of the place was just like so cool. You know, and it's like I could just see like me and my wife coming here just. Hanging out, chilling out. Maybe we're gonna to have to catch an open mic night. You do the open yeah. mic nights, right? Every That's the second, music tradition yeah. you're carrying on. Every second and fourth Thursday. So we've got an open mic night tonight okay. um, on the twenty. Coming up next Thursday, or not next Thursday, but the week after, we don't have open mic. We have that music festival. Right. Uh, so come out for that. It's ten dollars at the door, and it supports cancer uh, charities. Uh, Band-Aid, uh, all the proceeds are going to support different cancer charities, uh, especially young people who have are struggling and um, trying to make their way through their recovery. Process. And what was the name of that music festival again? That is the Band-Aid Music Festival. Band-Aid Music Festival. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, Megan, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Jonathan. And this was great. So, you know, until next time, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. I hope that you found it of value. If so, please share with a friend, subscribe in iTunes or Stitcher, leave a review, and tell me what you think of the show. To learn more about Megan and the Human Village Brewing Company, head over to www.gofollowup.com. Once again, thanks for joining. This is Jonathan Moore signing out for the Go Follow Up Podcast.